My name is Barbara Rich, and welcome to a very special segment of Bifocals. This episode is slightly different than most because of the subject matter. The other guy is not here with me right now because he conducted the on-camera interview many years ago. We both accompanied Sam Racusa, a Pearl Harbor survivor, during the 60th anniversary of the attack on December 7th in Oahu. Sam Racusa will tell his first-hand account of that day. Following the interview, we will play two classic movie trailers without our usual comment, and you'll see why. So without further ado, we will proceed with our special presentation. Yeah. It's just before my 22nd birthday, I was 21 years old. As uh, I turned, on the 11th, I turned 20, uh, 22. I joined the Marines in 1939, October 2nd. We expected that we'd go to war because uh, England and Germany who had, uh, were fighting and, and France also was uh, involved in the war at that time. You never know what's going to happen. Well, I recall it pretty well. What day was it? Well, it was a morning and uh, uh, we just got up and we'd missed breakfast because we overslept. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, uh, so we were going to get some stuff uh, at the canteen and, and uh, a place we call the Greasy Spoon out there. And, uh, and then we were going to play some cards. A uh, bunch of us were going to play, we were going to play poker. I can't even remember the names of the guys that I was going to play poker with. I was uh, Corporal uh, Rudd and, and uh, Sergeant Sears. And all of a sudden, you, what you heard? Well, we heard uh, bombing, and uh, we heard bombs going off, and, and so we went out. We we were living we were living in tents along the parade ground, uh, Marine barracks, and uh, uh, so we just went outside the tent and looked up and and uh, saw the planes flying around and and dropping uh, uh, bombs and. and uh, <clears throat> we thought there was maneuvers of some kind. Saw saw the red circle on the planes, and we thought there was a red team, or you know, the, probably because uh, uh -huh. uh, they had teams, color teams sometimes in uh, in maneuvers. And I can't remember the sergeant's name that had been uh, in uh, uh, been in China. And he knew that that was a Japanese. Those were Japanese planes. He knew that marking on on there. And then then suddenly they started fly, flying over us. After they dropped bombs in the harbor, they dropped go over our barracks, and uh, they would start strafing us, shooting shooting at us. And we did, we were unarmed at that time. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, they would fly over us and bomb Hickam Field, which which was uh, just on the other side of our our uh, parade ground there. At that time, now right now it's part of the uh, civilian uh, airport, uh, Honolulu Airport. All we, all we had were rifles with no ammunition, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the sergeant, a few few of the NCOs, the sergeants had uh, pistols, but they couldn't even fire those because uh, uh, no one had any ammunition at that mm -hmm. time. So we went. The army had to get ammunition. They told us it had to have a, a requisition for it. And uh, who who was at the armory? As uh, uh, I, I believe it was a, a lieutenant, a, a second lieutenant that was in in there. Anyhow, he told us that we had to have requisition. And uh, the, the Did he, could he hear the bombing and oh, see what was going yeah, on? I, I guess he could. <laughs> I, we, we could hear it. And uh, but. Uh, uh, that he wanted to refuse to give us any, uh, give us any ammunition. So, uh, uh, anyhow, Sergeant uh, Sears, Sergeant says, "Well, we're going to, we're going to take the ammunition then, and and, uh, 
And he said that we couldn't do that, but anyhow, we just went in there and, and took it. We just pushed our way in and, and uh, 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 loaded up uh, uh, some dollies that they had in there. And uh, uh, we got ammunition uh, for rifle ammunition, pistol ammunition, and then machine, machine gun ammunition for both, both 50 and, and uh, 30 caliber uh, machine guns. Mm -hmm. And we also got machine guns because we, we had none uh, with us. Uh, or we weren't assigned any machine guns for, for our outfit. We deployed them uh, uh, among the, the heavy equipment there. I was in the engineers and uh, they, we had heavy equipment and uh, we sort of used it to that, that for cover for us. Bulldozers and, and carry-alls and uh, different kinds of tractors and stuff. It had all kinds of heavy equipment there. and. Uh, uh, we would uh, we were in among them, and uh, use those for for cover, and uh, uh, set up machine guns, and and everybody, everybody had uh, then everybody around us got 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 ammunition for whatever they had, and uh, <coughs> we started shooting, and uh, the the Marines. Uh, uh, that were uh, deployed out there on the, on the around the parade ground there were credited with getting three planes to, uh, that were flying over. So they would come over in, and, in waves, you know, it would uh, be a little break and then a, a bunch of them would start coming over randomly, mm -hmm. it, it seemed like, and they were flying very low, I, I would say less than 100 feet off the ground and, and just fly over the barracks and uh, uh, and strafe, strafe in the fields as they were going there. They just wanted to keep us down. What they were trying to get were the ships and the planes mm -hmm. and their, with their bombs. They didn't bomb us at all. Yes, they were trying to get the, the equipment there. I think, I think it was a little over, over an hour because they, they came in, in two big waves. And there must have been 50, 100 planes, 50 to 100 planes. And, and I'm sure some of them went, went over more than one time. Mm -hmm. The ships were all there were ships all over the place. Oh, no, I didn't see them getting hit. Well, I see, because we had the the, the uh, <clears throat> marine barracks was between us and the and the the harbor. We visited after the attack. We visited a lot of uh, ships. A couple of couple of ships you could see that uh, were uh, gone aground. Mm -hmm. And several days later, they they brought up a. Um, I, I think they said it was a two-man submarine. It was a very small submarine that uh, was, I would say, 30 feet long. A Japanese, mm. yeah, it, it was Japanese it was, uh, that they'd captured. Mm. Then, uh, then it stopped and stopped. No more. There was no more bombing. But then we, then we, we started preparing. But everybody, everybody was armed at, by the by the time that that was over. Everyone was tense. To, because they wanted, you know, wanted to be sure that we we saw what was coming at, at us. There was no more firing until till uh, uh, that night, about an hour after sunset, or maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I don't know. After sunset, <clears throat> uh, we heard a plane, a plane. I think I don't know whether it was just one or or more than one, but. <clears throat> uh, it started coming over, and everybody started shooting at it. They picked they picked it up in uh, in uh, the uh, lights, and but uh, well, we do know now that it wasn't a Japanese plane. It, it was it was American. It was American plane, mm. and we were shooting at it. And uh, as far as I know, we didn't hit it, but. We, Place lit up like Fourth of July. Oh, the tra tracer bullets just go flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. wow. Then we then we went. We rode around the truck. There was probably five of us, four or five of us on on that, with a machine gun, 50 caliber machine gun mounted on it, and uh, <clears throat> we were patrolling around the the island. And uh, when uh, we got close to some pineapple fields. Uh, the, some of the natives there uh, that were working in the pineapple field c 
came uh, came over to to our truck there and told us that they that they'd had uh, they killed the Japanese that had crashed crashed this plane in the, in uh, w one of the fields there, and uh, one one of them give me give me gave me uh, the, the knife that he said that he killed killed him with. And mm. I brought it home and I gave it to my nephew mm. uh, Eddie, and I think that he still has it. At least the th last time I talked to him, he uh. still had it. So, mm. of course, saw a couple of the plane planes that uh, had gone down, and I got a part, piece of one plane, and I made mom a, a, a bracelet out of out of uh, mm. uh, when I don't know whether you ever saw it. It was a double heart. Bracelet. I think I have. Uh -huh. Okay, and and I have a piece of that. Uh, uh, still have a piece of that plane in a one of one of those uh, uh, albums. Uh, that album I made that was made out of wood. Mm -hmm. I have a, the, a piece of the plane in there, and uh, and that's where that accommodation uh, accommodation. Oh, that's from Roosevelt. Uh, oh, okay. From Roosevelt, I'm pretty sure it was from Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it must have been uh, at the time. Yeah, went aboard ship, and then we held a manu held maneuvers on Maui, and uh, and uh, then uh, we got we got um, orders to go to Saipan. We didn't know we were going to Saipan, but we got orders that, that while we were board ship that, that we were going to continue to uh, uh, battle and go into battle and go into an island. We knew we were going to an island, but we didn't know where. And uh, so we uh, went to, uh, uh, while, we were, while we were board ship, we were attacked by Japanese planes. And this, uh, this was a uh, a uh, week or ten days after we left Hawaii, we landed in Saipan. Harbor attack on Pearl Harbor. I was not. I was not afraid. I was so mad to, about it that that I was not afraid. Uh, but our first landing, you know, you got to think about it. You know, when it happens to you suddenly, uh, you you have a different reaction. But when you think about something like going into to a uh, a landing, uh, uh, go, going in, it was an airfield, uh, and we were, we were between the airfield and the ocean, and uh, late that night, probably around midnight, I'm not sure of the, the time, and during that night the, the Banzai attack happened, and, and uh, uh, we, by that time we'd had a gun, gun emplacements set up all, all along the airfield, and as they were coming across the airfield there, we were uh, we, we, could, we were just shooting them down, and they just kept on coming. Sure. Band size, well, uh, uh, when they got they got about, I would say over halfway across the airfield, and I guess they they gave gave up. They re retreated. They retreated after that. Went back to back to the other side of the airfield, and then the next mor next day, well, we what made them different. What made them different was that they were they uh, uh, screaming and hollering, and they were out in the open because they had no cover. There's an airfield; it's just a, it's just uh, right out in the open, and uh, uh, they I guess they were trying to scare us with their hollering and stuff, but we were just cutting them down. So, mm -hmm. and the next day, uh, we were pretty complacent. They we had captured a. Uh, over to the side of the airfield, there was a uh, Japanese ammunition dump. Uh, uh, maybe 75, 100 yards uh, uh, north east of us. Sometime in the uh, on the second day, they st they started using their uh, artillery and. Um, Aimed it at at that ammunition uh, dump that they had there, and uh, they uh, exploded it. Blew up their own ammunition. Blew, blew up their own ammunition. Pieces, uh, some some pieces uh, 
were about 18 inches long and uh, fragments and they'd come fly, flying through the air and one one piece landed in, in the foxhole I was in and killed the guy right next to me mm -hmm. and uh, I don't even recall his name it, it, it is, uh, uh, were you injured then no I was not injured when were you when were you injured I was the only the only day that I was injured at all and I was I did not report it was on the first day when when we, uh, at, at Pearl Harbor that I got hit in the ankle but it was uh, uh, with a a dying a dying bullet and it just uh, uh, burned my flesh and, and uh, just sort of uh, uh, tore a little bit of the flesh away there and and uh, that's uh, uh, the only time that I, I was injured in, during not during the war and I didn't report it because I didn't want to I, I thought we were going to go from, from from there on toward Japan you know mm -hmm. I didn't want to had to say that I was hurt, yeah, but it, I, it, it got infected a little bit, but then it went away after a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Where did uh, you get, uh, where do you think you picked up uh, malaria? I picked up malaria. got infected a little bit, but then it went away after a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Where did uh, you get, uh, where do you think you picked up uh, malaria? I picked up malaria. I picked up what they thought was malaria at that time, I, and I believe that it was the onset of uh, uh, dinghy fever instead of malaria, but uh, it was on on Saipan. In fact, is uh, while I was still in the service, several times I got I got recurring chills, and and, uh, and they told me that I had malaria. Uh, so I guess that's where I got the malaria was in. in in Saipan, yeah. but then also dinghy fever, and anyhow, I lost I lost uh, probably twenty pounds or more, probably maybe even thirty pounds, um, from this dinghy fever, and then prob probably the, the result of the dinghy fever, and also not getting sick and tired of eating sea rations and capture. Uh, some days we'd capture, you know, several Japanese that were holed up. Some of them were, some of them were sick with the dinghy fever, and and probably malaria. I'm I'm not sure what they had, but uh, during that time, we um, uh, I picked up a lot of uh, Japanese rifles and and Japanese. Uh, Souvenirs, as it were, but I I was more interested in eating, and <laughs> so uh, we every chance I get go aboard ship, and go aboard the ships that were coming into the harbor there, and trade the, all these uh, rifles and and helmets and whatever whatever we had. A, a Samari had a couple of Samaris, and I wish I'd have known that the, some of them. They said the 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 they had jewels under the under the wrappings on them. They were wrapped with the uh, cord mm. uh, on the, the swords and the, and the hand, yeah, on the mm. handles. And they said that underneath those, uh, they found that uh, uh, a lot of them had were uh, encrusted with jewels. And uh, but uh, anyhow, I probably would have traded them off anyhow for food so after we'd secured the island. Then then we went to uh, and took the. The island of Tinian. It was worse there in, in, on uh, Tinian than it was on Saipan, and uh, at least for for our outfit, the snipers we uh, would start shooting at them from different places, you know. And sometimes we could find out where they where they were shooting from. Sometimes we couldn't, and sometimes we could capture them or kill them, you know. And uh, <clears throat> but anyhow, it kind of affected me mentally. This, this after you had so many. Uh, Months uh, overseas, you got points, and uh, it, you were uh, uh, they would rotate you out and send you back home. But but 
when I had enough points, well, they kept me out there because of because of my ra my rating. Uh, I said that I, they had held me there for the convenience of the government. Hmm. Uh, for uh, even if I had enough points to go, I had more than almost double points that that. Uh, and but well, finally, finally. Uh, uh, They, they let us go home from from uh, Tinian. We went home, and early early September of '45, and uh, they kept me there until the 27th, and finally they discharged me. Uh, that's it. Mm -hmm. When uh, we get, came home, got, came home from uh, uh, Tinian. After we left Tinian and came back to the States, and uh, I got to see my oldest daughter the, for the first time, uh, and she was, she was uh, uh, just two years old. You know about the uh, <coughs> Pearl Harbor movie coming out this summer? Yeah, I know. There's a movie coming out. Yeah, I don't. Uh, Are you looking forward to seeing it? Yeah, I'd like to see what they what they did with it. Mm -hmm. See if it's uh, you know how authentic it is. I <clears throat> curious. On August 13, 2015, my father Sam Recusa died on his bed. He had been living in Irvine at my oldest sister Linda's house for two years since my mother had passed away. As Irvine was close by to where I was living, I was lucky to have shared a great deal of time with my father in his last two years. And the more I learned about my father, the more I liked the guy. One of the most important things I learned about my father's character was that he believed a person should strive to be their own best example. At the beginning of the year, my father, my sister Linda, and I went to see the movie Selma. When we came out of the film, I noticed that my father was crying. This was a very unusual thing in our family, so I asked him why. He said, your mother and I wanted to go to Selma to march with Dr. King, but we couldn't because we had to take care of kids. Well, this sparked uh, another question and answer session, and we talked for a while about his feelings about race. I was never angry at the Japanese, he told me. And I never held a grudge against any people of any other country or any other race. Then he added a detail of his service at Pearl Harbor that I'd never heard before. It seems that my father was the crew chief of a group of Marines who had built the barracks and other structures at Hickam Field. He was a Sicilian American in charge of a completely African American crew. It is no secret that in those days Sicilians were not widely accepted as being white, so it seemed logical that they might put him in charge of a completely black crew. My dad said of this crew, they knew more about building than I did, but I was their superior, and I remember apologizing and saying, I'm sorry that I'm in charge. <laughs> you obviously know more about what needs to be done than I do, so just tell me what you want me to order you to do. So being a good journalist, I decided for a follow-up question. During the 60th anniversary, I had interviewed him, and he told me that his best memory of the World War II was when he came home and saw his two-and-a-half-year-old daughter for the first time. So at the theater, I asked him, what was his greatest regret of the war? Without skipping a beat, he said, his greatest regret was losing touch with his best friend from high school, Floyd Fuji. So here was this Pearl Harbor survivor Marine who had gone on to some of the bloodiest battles in the Pacific campaign. But like most service people, he was at war with the country of Japan. 
his best friend from high school, born in the United States, had been taken to Manzanar, and there he had lost track of Floyd. Later, I heard that Floyd joined the service and served honorably, but I never could find him again, my father said. And I've always regretted it. We were such good friends. So why had he never told me that his best friend was Japanese and, or that his crew at Pearl Harbor was black? I didn't think their race was significant, he said. Aloha, boy. Aloha, boy. Eke o na o na no ho i kali.